We are at Mobile World Congress 2025. We are here with Harold, the father of Li-Fi. We can turn light bulbs into high-speed data transmitters. It's a huge resource that is untapped for wireless communications. We made it work here for many, many applications. Hello, IPX. We are at Mobile World Congress 2025. We are here with Harold, who I'm told is the father of Li-Fi. Thank you very much for the nice introduction. So really, current radio networks are all based on radio spectrum, RF waves. So what we have done in the last, uh, say, 20 years, we have used light waves to uh, communicate wirelessly at very, very high speeds. When I talk about light waves, I mean your ordinary light bulb at, ho at home produces light waves. You can turn light bulbs into high-speed data transmitters. Uh, and we can uh, communicate um, indoors, we can communicate outdoors, we can communicate underwater, and, and light has a number of, of key advantages. So you might, you might see that light already powers our communication networks in fiber. Yes. So basically what we have done is we have liberated the photon, which is want to be very fast, to get it out in the air to, to build high-speed wireless networks. And the reason why we do that uh, is because Radio spectrum is scarce, it's very expensive, so operators have to pay a lot of money to get their licenses. Uh, and the, uh, the optical spectrum is about 3,000 times larger than the entire radio spectrum. So it's a much, much bigger space, it, just, it, just to start with. It, it's a huge resource that is untapped for wireless communications. And we made it work here for many, many applications. Right, so let's just start from the beginning. We know that Datacoms is... is, is uh, dominated by light, as you talked about, fiber optics yeah. going underneath the Atlantic. That's right. Taking all that data so that we can have the internet. That's right. So, so we understand that. So, but we understand that in that, in that respect, it is controlled photons. That's controlled photons. Because they're photon. being sent from A to, to B, B right. in a controlled environment. That's right. Okay. You used the phrase, I didn't think you say, unleash the photon, but you said something like that. We liberate the photon. Liberate. Explain what that means. So our design engineers are trying to understand the world of photonics. They understand that this world of photonics is coming, and they understand that light is a, way that they're, or is a potential way that they're going to use their devices to communicate with, an, with another device. So what's the difference between unliberated light going through a fiber optic cable right. to liberated light in right. the way that you describe it because there's a there's a distinct difference between those two things that that is absolutely right so in in as you rightly described currently the the, the photons run in a very thin cable it's a waveguide uh, that guides the light through a channel so you have a fixed point where you feed that it photons in and you have a fixed point where it comes out. Usually you can't move both ends, they are static. No. This, however, has proven that you can use light waves to transmit a terabit per second, very high data rates. It's already yep. using that huge amount of spectrum. So, we know that that so now happen. we take the fiber away yep. and photons become uh, sort of uh, free and float everywhere. Yep. That means that you can now suddenly have the receiver moving and the transmitter moving, and you can support mobility. You can roam indoors, and we re retain the benefits of high bandwidth, really going into gigabits of data rates in the future, maybe yes. even terabits of data in your home. So we're getting to the nub of the problem. So we've described a, 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 a digital, literally a digital, one place to another place. That's right. It goes in one direction. You have decoders at each end that says this is what the light's doing. But you know that it's going from one direction to another direction. You then use the phrase liberated. So then you start to compete with RF and you've described how RF is expensive and the frequencies and the licenses and all that kind of thing. That's right. The thing about RF is it's all moving. It's moving things, whether it be an object. I know most of the time they're static, but it's from one place to another. It's not, it's not a wired. It's not a wired scenario. That's right, right. Right, so explain how light replaces RF in that scenario. I mean, a simple example is look at your illumination patterns at home. When you turn on the light, yep. you don't have a, a sort of a light spot at a table. The entire room is lit. So that means that photons are already everywhere in your room. Yes. And they could base receivers at any place in a room to then capture the photons. The, the, the problem is uh, how to 
gain, how to capture enough photons to detect the, uh, the information. And this is where IPR and where all the, the, the secret sauce sits in, yeah. but it allows the same benefits of, of, uh, of Wi-Fi in terms of mobility uh, and gives us uh, higher data rates and more performance with higher, data, uh, higher speed. But having said that, it, it's obviously not possible to receive data outside your room. Yeah. When you have a wall in between, no. there's no data. Many people say, oh, it's a disadvantage. But if you think about it, it's a huge advantage in two ways. First, somebody outside the room will not be able to tap into it. There are security Oh, things. yeah, much more secure, yep. a little bit like the, the fiber is secure. Yep. You retain some of the security. Yep. And the other thing is the transmitter in one room doesn't interfere with the transmitter or receiver outside. You can have the same light source installed at different places in your home yep. without creating interference. We get interference-free networks. Uh, and, 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 and that is a key point to really retain reliability uh, and, and also um, yeah, good performance all the time. Okay, so if I'm a design engineer today and I'm watching this video, I need to decide whether I'm gonna go down the RF Wi-Fi route and then all of a sudden the father of Li-Fi comes along and says, hang on a minute, I've got another solution. What are the three points that I would go through to say Li-Fi might be a solution for me with my application? So there's a number of, of points. Uh, you mentioned security. That, yes. that, that's one point, very clear one. And the other one is, is data rate right. at the moment. If you look at the progression of, of Wi-Fi, they don't allocate more bandwidth to the system. They squeeze more bits into one hertz. Right. And that really doesn't work in a, in, a, in, a, in a large environment because there's limited bandwidth. So if we want to have reliable high speed, 10 gigabit per second or even higher, there is no way around Li-Fi. And if you think, why would you need one gigabit or 10 gigabit? I mean, that is imagination. If you have AR, VR headsets, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Thanks you don't, you don't want to be seasick, and you want to have yep. a good quality at low, a low weight, you need to have a thin client like your glasses that operate as a VR glass, and you need data rate and not processing. The processing can be in a, in a light source. The other one is, we are seeing in this conference uh, holographic displays three-dimensional displays. They are here, and they may be at some point in your smartphone so that you could be immersive in a, in a three, in a, in a metaverse in the future where you are not on Zoom on a, a two-dimensional screen, you immerse with your colleagues as if you would be in there physically. And, and, and um, holographic displays at high resolution need tens of gigabit of data. To unlock that capability, there is no way around light. There's no way around. There is no way around, uh, and, uh, and 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 you need to have that imagination and drive that innovation in, in that in that regard. Light is the light will future-proof wireless communications. There is no way around it. Such as light will future-proof computing. Moore's law. We come to limits, so the optical computer will come maybe at a much later state, but the world in a few years, maybe in tens of years will be all photonics, or what I, what I guess will be the case. The, the photons are the key of, of, of a future sort of a connectivity and also compute yeah. and sensing. I mean, you can use light for LiDAR, so you have sensing, compute, and, and communication yeah, well, in one already, package. People are already playing with LiDAR. LiDAR is a, fa is a, is a fact of our life. It's, it's, a, it's right. You know, right. It's, sensing we, is there, yeah. We're already doing light sensing, so it's not, like, right. it's not like it's a leap of faith. And we do, we do light communications, and a few years later, we do light yeah. compute. Yeah. So, so we, we talk about latency all the time. Latencies. All the time. That's, that's, that, that's crucial because we get autonomous cars, the drones, you want to control in real time without latency. And some people think you can go via satellites. Oh. You can't. Any industrial you need, robot. You, you, Any industrial you need, robot. You need, you need a good, reliable, high-speed connectivity on the ground, in your manufacturing halls, in, in your cities, in your, in your hospitals, everywhere, higher, reliable connectivity with, the, with, with high speed. Um, and that's, that's crucial. OK, so I am a design engineer. I want to, so I, I buy into everything that you've just said. 
Yeah. It's not just because you're the father of Li-Fi, it's because... As it's many people have contributed to it, by the way, so yeah. But but it's it's obvious when you describe it in the way that you have described it. Yeah, yeah. It becomes obvious. So how do I go about... I'm, I'm starting a project where I need these much, much higher data rates. How do I go about evaluating whether I should go what RF, Wi-Fi or light? How do I... What's the... How do I do that? Because so many people, that's alien science. That's not. That's that's off planet. That's not something that that, that that sounds very complicated. You said it's not expensive. This sounds expensive, and it's going to have to be learning a new skill. So, how do they go about evaluating Li-Fi for their na their next application? I mean, many people know radio communications and how radio works. You have Bluetooth. You have Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G. You can kind of guess. Sometimes the, what you find of the box is not inside the box. In terms of data rate, people need to be careful. And there's companies like Pure Li-Fi that have been around the block for many, many years selling Li-Fi products. There's a website there that the products are described, and and um, and you can compare and you can uh, can make your own decision when when uh, what technology is used at what what location.